Okay, so thanks for joining me in part three of this video. You can see since you've been gone, uh, I populated the database with some random data. Um, all these image files are just from Google and I've named them based on what is in the image. So you can see we've got a Rubik's Cube, Cool Owl, this shark, Cartoon Heart Disease, this joke is a bit of a stretch, which is a stretch is kind of a absolutely terrible joke, and our friend Homer. These are all names of users in our database. These have all signed up for our platform, our website, and this is their profile image that they've uploaded. Um, so you can see this is exactly what we got left with in the last video and um, but obviously we don't want it the same market all the time well obviously you don't want it the same market all the time and um, so we're gonna have to populate this with with this data based on what's typed in so i've created a file um, and included it here called search.js and it's in the javascript file here you can see it and i've opened it up but for now it's blank so we have to create the file that um basically what we want is every time a key is pressed in the search box run a function that will then get the uh, input from the database so i'm going to do document dot ready function run a function when a document is ready to to run functions um but for, to start off with, we want to say input dot val nothing. So every time we refresh the page, uh, all the input uh, value is gone from the input field. But then we're going to say dot search, which if you remember in our HTML is what we call the search box just here. So search dot key up function. So when the key comes up, not when it's the key is pressed, when they release the key. And this is just to stop people holding down the key and every time, you know, it, it's a waste of resource. So key up, you can do key down, doesn't really make much of a difference. So I'm going to say when the key up is pressed, if this, this being the search box dot value, if the value of the search box length, if the length of whatever's in the search box is greater than zero, then we want to check the database. But if it's not, if, it, if the search box is empty, we don't want to check for empty data. So we're going to say uh, results dot HTML is blank. You know, delete all of the content from inside this. So if I type in my name or something else, and then I press backspace enough times where there's no characters, then obviously we don't want uh, blank data shown. We just want the results box to disappear. But now, obviously, we want to do the cool thing. If there is, you know, input in our in in the in the search box, we want to say var search term, which is obviously the term that they're searching for. You know, wh whatever they put into the search box, and we want this to update every time the key is pressed. So we keep it inside here. So if I type m search term will equals m. If I type a, it'll be m a and etc etc. Um, the so search term has to be this the text box, the text area, the text input, whatever you want to call it, this dot val, the value of whatever's put in. Um, but now I'm going to do the cool thing. So we do dollar sign dot post, which means we want to post send data to somewhere. Where do we want to send the data? To includes slash search dot php, which is a file that we're going to make. Um, get rid of this closing um, bracket, do a comma, and then open up a function thing. And now we're going to say search colon is equal to search term. This, the word search here is what we're going to use to refer to it in the PHP that we make later, which is what we're going to search the database for. And the value of this is going to be search term, which as I explained before, will update every time the key is pressed. Now I'll do comma function data. So that means once this has been done, once we've sent the data, we want to get a response. So this is a callback function and it's going to have data. And data is going to be equivalent to whatever the file, whatever the search.php file sends back, which obviously is going to be the users. So we're going to say, dot results dot html data so for now if we create this file let's go into our includes um, new file and then save it as search dot php if I create a php tag close it off and echo lol oops I forgot to and I forgot to do this I should have known by the red thing at the bottom if I just close this off properly it'll close off the, po uh, the post parameter Sorry guys, I totally messed this up for you. We have to get rid of this. This is unneeded. Um, people, a lot of people don't know. I kind of pre-record these videos a little bit. Um, it's kind of annoying when I get things wrong. So just bear with me a little bit. Um, I get as stressed out as you do, believe me. So now if I go to our browser and refresh, you can see it's done as it's told. It's deleted all the input from here. So if I type a th a anything at all in, it says lol. And that's because that's what is echoed from our search.php file. Obviously we don't want it to say lol. So now we need to populate this properly. So inside here, we need to say search equals underscore post search. And that's represented here. You see, we call this search and we give it the value of search term. So now we pass it into here. 
if I echo back, echo, search, you can see that every time we type, it just puts back in the box exactly what we what we typed in. And again, if we if we delete all of the content and it's it's empty, then we don't get the results box. You see, this is exactly it's working perfectly so far. So we can get rid of echo search. Obviously, we don't want it to echo back what we've just put in. Now we do query. You can call this whatever you want. Con. Remember we made it in in part one. Our database file is called con which connection query one a function inside of con called query and we're going to say select all from users where name is like so this in caps for consistency where the name is like name search so we've called search so where the name of the of the user is like what they put into the box and we've used the word like for a reason we could just say equals here but then we'd have to type in the user's exact name. We don't want that. So like search. If we had the percent sign here, that means it's allowed to be content before the search term. So again, to use my own name as an example, if I do Mark, if I type the word Hinton into our search box, obviously there's content before that because my first name is Mark. So this will still appear because it's allowed content before. So if we had one after as well, that means that it's allowed content afterwards, after our search term as well. So this just makes it really universal. And then we need to say limit. Five. So if I type in A, which obviously is going to be in like every, almost everyone's name, a lot of people's names have vowels in, and A is a common vowel. Um, it don't show every single user in the database in a, a million, you know, million strong list. Just limit it to five people, um, and then close this off. And I'll say if the query. So if this num rows, if the number of rows returned is greater than zero, which means yes, a user has been found, then do the thing else. So if there's no user's been found, echo. See how in our CSS video, we made the, um, we made the class called no users. We need to say p class equals no users. Yeah. Close this off here. Oh God. P. And then inside say no users found. And then obviously, if there has been users found, then this is the cool bit. So we need to say while, which is kind of like a for each loop in the way we use this. So while there's still users left, then do whatever I'm going to tell you to do. So while user equals mysqli underscore fetch associ fetch an associative array for the query command that we've defined up here, which means that get all of the data and put it into an array so that we can use it by referring to it using its um, row in the database. So now we're gonna echo, go down a couple of lines, just put this down here, cause there's gonna be some HTML in here now. So this is for each user, do the thing that's inside here, which is echo, what, what, echo what? So now go to our index and you see where we've made a user. So now we should copy all of this and delete it from here, leaving the results div empty. Go to our search and inside our echo, put this in. But instead of user image being blank, we want to say back uh, style background image URL, and then do open this up here. Take basically take this out of our echo statement. Do dot user. In square brackets, we need to define what we call it in the database. So this is our user image. So call it image because that's the row that we've called it in the database. Our column name is data in the database's image. And then do the same thing for the name. So do um, break this out of our echo statement. Do dot to um, append data and then user and then call the name. And then if you look at this now, you see what we've got undefined variable con and that's for a good reason we didn't inc yet include our init.php so we need to include init.php and save this and go back here and now if I type m it says yay still because I didn't delete that which I definitely should have done so delete yay from our init.php file delete all of this come back in here and now if I type in D you see we've got cartoon heart disease our friend Homer because there's a D in disease and there's a D in friend um, no pun intended now if we type mark no users found I'm not in the database um, but obviously we need to style this um, 
by in our style we called it no user so I obviously need to call it the same thing here so save that and now if I type you know a Z there's no users with a Z in the name if I type L we've got cruel owl because it is a cruel owl let's just, let's just face it it is W still got cool owl a a rubik's cube this shark cartoon heart disease which is a gif you can use gifs also and this joke is a bit of a stretch ostrich ha 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 that's everything we want to do so you know thanks a lot for watching this series and um, i hope you've learned a lot from these videos leave a comment let me know what you want to see next let me know what i should improve i understand this video is a little bit sloppy and um, that's just down to the fact that i haven't really written out the post um, ajax call a lot so i get a little bit you know take some trial and error when i'm not doing it from a script um just thanks a lot for watching this video basically and um i hope to see you back here on this channel again for the next one and please subscribe thanks for watching